Okay, so this is about collisions. And so, you know, when we have two objects colliding, uh, we can calculate the changes in momentum and stuff like that, but we also want to model it. So I w instead of just looking at a simulator, I want to build a simulator because it's better. Okay, uh, so here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to build this in Python. So here I have two balls that are colliding. They can have different momentum. I don't really care. And they're moving towards each other. Once they overlap, once this uh, the, the distance between these two is less than the sum of the radiuses, then I'm going to turn on, a, I'm going to quote, turn on a force. So this force is going to push them apart. And the magnitude of this force is going to be proportional to the amount overlapped. So if they're barely overlapping, there's barely a force. If they overlap more, there's more of a force. And now what makes momentum conserved is that if ball B pushes on A, this is that force right here, force B on A, then A pushes on B with the exact same magnitude force in the opposite direction. So this is a spring-like force because it's proportional to the amount of overlap. But wait, it gets even better. What if it's not so simple? What if it's a offset collision like this? So they're, I didn't draw the momentums, but they, they, they kind of hit and they're not in a line. Well, if I use this vector from the center of A to B, and I know that direction as a vector, I can use that to calculate the vector force in different directions. So it doesn't matter if the force is not in the same direction as the momentum. The momentum principle still works. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is check if they overlap. If they overlap, calculate this vector r from a to b. So that's just the position of a, b minus position of a. And I think I called them 1 and 2 in the program, but don't worry about that. Next, for each ball, well, I'm going to calculate the force, which I didn't show you the equation for because it's a little complicated and it's not really that important. The next thing I'm going to do is to calculate the change in momentum. So this is the momentum principle. This says that if I have... Uh, object A and I exert a force on it for some time interval and I'm going to break this problem into a bunch of little time steps then I can calculate the new momentum that's what I did right here so this says okay there's an overlapping force that pushes ball A so I can calculate the new momentum and then do the exact same thing for ball B and then go back to A and say okay now I know the momentum which is gives me the velocity and I can use that to update the position now I have a new position now I'll start back over check and see if they're overlapping if they're not overlapping just let them move on the force is zero if they are recalculate the force and keep doing that so now I can explore momentum and kinetic energy in these collisions this is the total kinetic energy just as a reminder okay jump to the program which I've already written and I will I will give you the code for it down below yay okay Let's just go through each of these lines because they're super. Let me run it first. Okay, so here I have, um, I, I can't remember what I put. I have a graph too. I'll show you just the, uh, the output first. Loading. Boy, I'm so impatient. Okay, here's, I have the initial uh, yellow ball is stationary and the red ball is moving at a snail's pace near it. It's so slow that I want to go back and change the velocity and I'm still tempted to, even though it's just about to hit it. And it hits. They overlap, there's a force pushing on them, and ball B bounces back, and then it stops because I didn't run it long enough. That's cool. Okay, so here, T graph, that makes this graph right here, and right now I'm plotting time versus momentum. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about those things right there, and I'm going to go ahead and change this to green because yellow does not show up. Look at that. Can you see yellow? I can't see yellow. So then I have three things I'm plotting, which is the momentum of ball one, momentum of ball two, and the total momentum in the X direction. So now I make ball one, it's just an object, uh, nothing special about that, make ball two. I give them both the mass, which I can change and you should change, that's a cool thing to change. The radius is important because that's how I can tell when they overlap or not. Um, K is the spring constant to calculate that force. So that, that's not a super important constant, we can change that and see what happens, but that's that. And then I set the initial momentums of both balls. So here you see ball two is at rest because it has a zero vector velocity times its mass. Uh, now I have a time and a time step, and then let's run this for seven seconds. So step one is to set both of the forces equal to zero. I could have just said one, but both the forces are equal to zero. Uh, I calculate the vector position from ball A to one to two, uh, and then I check if the magnitude of that vector is less than twice the radius of the ball to see if there's an overlap. If, there, if it's 
it is, then I calculate the new force. And this is just a spring force. So I, there's a little tricky stuff here with unit vectors and things like that, but it's not super bad. And then the other force is just the opposite of that. That's it. Okay, so this only happens if they overlap. Otherwise, the force is zero, and these two things don't do anything because the force are zero, but these are the update momentum expressions. Then I update the position expressions, update time, and then I plot stuff. Okay, so let's make this one go a little bit faster because that was uh, painstakingly slow, and let's just see what happens. Wow. Come on. There it goes. It's going to hit. I don't know why it's running so slow. Okay, so it looks like it's bouncing back, but it's not. It's stopped. Okay, it's stopped. And this is what happens when you have two ball balls of the same mass with an elastic collision. These are elastic collisions, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you that in just a second. Because in, the only way to conserve momentum is if the yellow ball is moving, then the and kinetic energy is for the red ball to stop. So this one stops, and that one keeps moving. Uh, and if you scroll down here to the graph, you can see that. So here is the uh, momentum of the red ball, and then it collides and stops. And the green ball is stopped, and it increases. But the total momentum, and this is in the x direction. You cannot plot the momentum vector because it has three pieces. Okay. So the total momentum is constant. So that says physics is working. Uh, let's try just for fun. What if I increase this spring, decrease the spring constant by five? What's going to happen? Remember the picture of that curve because I just deleted it. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, I got scared for a second there because I know something that could happen. Okay. So what's different about this curve? It's momentum is still conserved. The outcome is still the same. K did not change the outcome. But what happened was the interaction took a longer time. So this is a lower slope and so is this one. Now, I tell you, it is possible if your spring constant is too low, then the ball can actually pass through the other ball and change momentum, uh, but but it won't bounce back. So it won't be a real it won't be a realistic moment. Momentum will be conserved. Let me show you that. I think. Yeah, so let's put that at point one. I'm just playing around here, people. I don't know what I'm doing. I wish this would load faster. I don't know why it's slow. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Yeah, ha, it passed right through it. Okay, so it passed right through it, but you'll notice that the green ball did move. Okay, and that there's a little dip right there. I should have made a larger spring constant. Let's put this back to 10, and you can, that's fine. Uh, now let's try this. What happens if I increase the mass of ball 3? I'm going to make it twice as much at 0.6. So now you'll see the red ball bounces back, okay? So if you look at this momentum graph down here, uh, the red ball's moving, there's zero right there, and then it has a negative x momentum after the collision. And the only way to make the total momentum constant is to have the green ball uh, have a higher momentum than the initial momentum of the ball in the x direction. That doesn't mean it's moving faster, right? Because it has a greater mass. This is a momentum plot. Okay, what should we plot now? Should we do 2D collisions? Um, I think we should do kinetic energy. Let's just double check and make sure that this is indeed an elastic collision. So I need to calculate the mo the kinetic energy here. So let's say K1 is going to be uh, point P squared over 2M. That's right. So it's, it's going to be one way to calculate is momentum squared. So I'm going to say uh, ball1 dot mag, mag ball1 dot P squared divided by 2 times ball 1 dot m and then k2 is going to be mag ball 2 dot p squared divided by 2 times ball 2 dot m and then the k total kt is going to be k1 plus k2 so let's see if the kinetic energy is constant i'm just going to um let's just plot let's just delete this k1 This video might be long, and I don't mind. Uh, that's weird. I should just calculate that anyway. 
And I feel bad deleting this because I'm going to have to retype them. Okay, I'm not going to change the axis because I just wanted to run it. Error. KT is KT, not KT. Okay. K T. Case does matter in Python. I knew that. Okay. But I just made a mistake. Okay, so here we go. They're colliding. Should the collision should be the same thing? Because this is just changing the plot. Cool, cool, cool. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that you cannot have negative kinetic energy. Okay, so here is the total kinetic energy. That's the red ball too. The green ball's not moving. And then the red ball decreases and actually stops right there and then increases in speed because it's, it's getting pushed back. And then the red one just increases in speed and then the total stays the same. So kinetic energy is conserved. It's an elastic collision. I knew that already though. Okay. Um, Let's see a different collision, one that's a little bit cooler. What if ball two, what if they're not in the straight line? What if ball two has is uh, shifted just a little bit? And I'm gonna I'm gonna increase this rate to see if that helps um, to make it run a little bit faster because I'm that impatient. Oh what I'm sorry. <laughs> that's funny it missed. Okay, I increased the momentum. I give it an initial Y momentum. I did not want to do that. I wanted to increase the position of point one in the Y direction. See, now they're all set and look, check that out. What do you think about that? And is kinetic energy conserved? Y no. No, and it shouldn't be. Okay, this is a great point. I've threw, threw myself off right here. So here's the kinetic energy beforehand. Here's the kinetic energy afterwards. That is an elastic collision. But is it always constant? No, because look right here, it dips down. Why does it dip down right here? Because imagine while these two balls are colliding uh, and they're slowing down, there is another energy that's not being accounted for. And that's the energy stored in this fake spring that's pushing them together. So during that short collision time, kinetic energy is not conserved. It's just before and after the collision. But, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, you could print out the final, uh, the final momentum of the, the final moment. Let's do the final velocities. So let's print um, V2 equals, and that's gonna be ball 2.p divided by uh, ball 2.m and I should put units meters per second and then let's do that to print v1 equals this is afterwards ball 1.p divided by ball 1.m comma meters per second Okay, and this is the last thing I'm going to play with, because but you you should go in here and let me I'm going to show you one other thing, things that you can change after this. Okay, so it, it ran. So there's my final velocities. You could use that to check stuff. You could calculate the angles, and you could have a whole, have so much fun, so so much fun with that right there. Okay, so things you should change this. You should change the initial position of ball two. I would just keep this one right here because you're just dealing with the relative position. If they don't overlap at some point, then they'll never collide and that's momentum still conserved, but it's just boring. Uh, change the masses of the two balls. Uh, you could again, try playing with this spring constant right there. That's fun. You could change, you could make one of the balls bigger than the other one. That'd be cool to do too. Um, what to change none of the, you don't need to change all this the only thing to change on here is the plotting stuff and the printing at the end so you can have a ton of fun with this i'll i'll change this back to the uh, momentum plot uh and i'll delete this stuff and i'll save it and then i'll include that link down below but there you go go have some fun play with this stuff momentum is awesome and i'll talk to you later